live, local, late breaking. This is KZI 9 News Midday. Well, good morning and thanks for watching KZI 9 News at Midday. I'm Adam Miranda. And I'm Storm Tracker 9 Meteorologist Cameron Landfield. All right, Cameron, uh, we talked about it earlier, but maybe some of our viewers are just joining us. We saw some sunshine peek through yesterday. That might not be the case today, maybe. Yeah, so it did look like at about 9 o'clock earlier, we saw just a little flare of sunshine out there, but it is mostly gray skies for today, wow. and I wouldn't expect as much beauty as we saw yesterday. But it's still good out there, so let's check out the cameras right now. Now, so you can see what it's like over a couple areas. We're starting off with Holly Square, and what you're looking at right now is the Beltline and Coburg. And it doesn't look like rain is actively falling at the moment. We're starting to move into the drier period here for Eugene. But if you move down towards the south, there's still some rainfall falling, and we could get some showers later on through the day. So let's move up north a bit to see if it's even clearer. And yes, that is the case. We're seeing a little pop of sunshine there, a couple of those with the clouds breaking up, but we'll keep cloud coverage for the most part. And if we do clear out entirely, you can actually expect to see some fog into the evening. Temperatures, though, are looking lower than yesterday, and that's going to be the case moving into tomorrow as well. We have a little bit of extra cold air overhead right now, and that got pulled in from the storm system that we saw this morning that brought all the rainfall. So we're sitting in those mid to low 40s inland, mostly the mid 40s at this point, and Almost at 50, not quite there for Newport and Yahats, but as we go down towards the south, it's a little bit cooler on the coast. And that's again because they still are seeing the most heavy cloud coverage. And it's still raining down in many places. Inland, it's the same deal as well. That's another indicator of strong cloud coverage. The difference in temperatures on the coast and inland is not very high in the south. So there's more clouds out there and more rain as well. But I'll, I'll show you a little more about that rain and what the rest of the week in even the weekend looks like in a few minutes. Cameron, thank you very much. A terrifying situation for one Springfield family after a man was stabbed nine times back in January. The man who stabbed him is in jail and a GoFundMe has been set up to help raise money to help him pay for his medical expenses as he recovers. Police say this happened on January 21st when Jeff Collins was on L Street in Springfield getting paid to do some cleanup work after the recent ice storm. He noticed a man across the street yelling at him and when Collins approached him, that's when police say the yelling man stabbed him nine times. Police say 43-year-old Thomas Murphy was unknown to Collins at the time when he stabbed him. Murphy was booked on an assault charge and remains in custody, but Collins was losing a lot of blood and suffering from a collapsed lung. He was taken to the hospital where he's been recovering since. These neighbors still are shocked about the incident. Stuff like this happens in other neighborhoods, but I never, I mean, I don't know what the guy's history is, but to know that he was down there and that he was out actually that mentally ill that he would stab somebody that many times for absolutely nothing that we know of. The family says the man accused of stabbing Collins should not have been back on the streets. Go back to 2015. Murphy was found guilty by insanity for attacking two women with a pickaxe and a hammer on this same street in Springfield. Lane County DA says Murphy was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder and was supposed to stay in custody at the Oregon State Mental Hospital for a total of 30 years. But he was released in 2017 after a psychiatric review determined that he had no longer a mental disease or defect. Neighbors are still shocked. Someone like this was hanging around nearby. It's kind of weird to think that uh, that guy lives down there and that he did something like that. It makes me feel uneasy that it, it was that close. Murphy is still in custody at the Lane County Jail facing an assault charge. And if you want to help Jeff Collins uh, family raise money for medical expenses and legal services, we do have a link to that GoFundMe on our website at KZI.com. And on Saturday, deputies were called out to Highway 99 near Saginaw for an alleged kidnapping. A deputy found a vehicle recognized uh, the suspect, Jason Searles, in the back seat. Deputies asked Searles to get out of the car, but he refused and started to move around the back seat like he was looking for something. And because of that, the deputies sent in a canine unit named Bruno, who was able to get him out of the car. Deputies say they were unable to confirm a kidnapping had occurred. Searles was arrested and faces charges for harassment, failure to report as a sex offender, resisting arrest, and a parole violation. 
And residents in Lebanon were disgusted after a messy scene was left in the bathrooms of Windmill Park. Now, we did have to blur some of these images because they were too graphic to share with you uncensored. But take a look at your screen with me here for a second. You can't see too much, but this is the disgusting scene at Wynn Miller Park in Lebanon. You can see the mess of human feces and trash smeared all over the walls, the floors, the toilets. I mean, just everywhere. It's uh, very gross. The surprising part was the bathrooms were actually locked down for the winter season, but someone still found a way to get inside. City officials are investigating, which we're told is a bit of an inconvenience. Unfortunately, this isn't a uh, really an isolated incident. We deal with these types of situations in all the parks, whether they're winterized or not. Um, and it could even be just in a daily use. Unfortunately, the neighbors feel this situation is just more of the same for the park. It, I've seen quite a bit of that. It, and it, the immediate reaction is, is how would you let anybody go down there and play, like kids especially, go down and play in the park? Neighbors are just hoping this incident will ultimately keep the bathrooms closed for good, but the city is aiming to keep them open with the help from the community. City officials say if you ever encounter something like this, you're asked to call the public works line during business hours. If you're interested in the full story, you can go to our website at KZI.com. And in our severe weather coverage, an animal shelter in Junction City is asking for your help. Save Dog Rescue Shelter lost thousands of dollars during this recent ice storm, so they need your help with rebuilding three structures that help protect dogs from the rain that were destroyed during the storm. If you look at your screen, you can see those structures just absolutely crumbled down from that weight of the ice. Now, they still need about $6,000 after these sturdy metal kennels were completely flattened. If you'd like to help the nonprofit, you can find a link to our website, and we just uh, listed it off. But again, for you, if you need it, it's kezi.com. In a follow-up, last night's uh, several Springfor Springfield Utility Board members gave feedback about the response to the recent ice storm. The meeting was a time for sub-officials to simply listen to their customers' thoughts and concerns, whether in person or virtually. Some of the concerns brought up by customers were slow response times and a, quote, lack of staff. Another spoke about some frustrations. There's a lot of frustration, and none of it was directed at the linemen because they're doing an excellent job but they're also overwhelmed because it's unprecedented. As far as bringing in other utilities to help, I guess um, I think probably a lot of us aren't quite sure what the mechanisms are to engage that or to get people in. I think the first helpers didn't come till Tuesday, I wanna say, and the storm started Saturday. So I guess one question would be, um, has that been reviewed and what is the process to bring in other ut utilities, especially when there is um, such widespread damage? Sub-officials asked several questions and took notes. One other concern brought up was about money lost during the storm. And here's what board chair Mark Molina had to say to get things wrapped up. We know this is serious and it's serious to us too. And I just want everyone who's listening and those in the room to know that there are many measures being set forward, many corrective measures internally, externally, uh, many We've authorized, I, I think it's important to say that the board's authorized an initial investment by the general manager and sub of a quarter of a million dollars to distribute to citizens to help recover some of what was lost. He says other amounts have been discussed and the board is trying to see what will be accounted for. The board is looking forward to supporting the community and says we're all in this together. Now to an update, new concerns about airline safety following that preliminary report from the NTSB on the door plug that flew off an Alaska airplane plane last month. Federal investigators saying bolts that were supposed to hold that door in place were not there. ABC's Rena Roy takes a look at the latest. Four crucial bolts should have been in place on the door plug of this Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9, but a new report from the NTSB says the bolts were removed and never put back on. The door plug flying off midair last month. The NTSB says during manufacture there was an unrelated issue with the fuselage. To fix it, the door plug had to be removed. When the plug was put back on, investigators say the bolts designed to hold it in place were never reinstalled. It's perfectly logical to assume that the bolts were in place before the door was opened for maintenance uh, on the line. But once the door was closed up again behind the insulation, the problem was nobody had put the bolts back in. A photo shared between Boeing staffers showed at least three of those crucial bolts missing after the work was completed. Turns out the plane flew nearly 150 times with those bolts missing before the door plug flew off. 
What's really terrifying is that this airplane flew about 150 times with this situation just ticking away like a time bomb. This week, the head of the FAA testifying on Capitol Hill saying things need to change. The current system is not working because it's not delivering safe aircraft. Boeing CEO saying in a statement, whatever final conclusions are reached, Boeing is accountable for what happened. Adding an event like this must not happen on an airplane that leaves our factory. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York.